going to talk about Will Smith and the apology he's done on Instagram. Greg, why don't you tell us about the videos we're going to watch? Yeah, there's not much more to talk about except for this is three months after he slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars and he's coming to do an apology. We'll see whether we believe him or not. Why didn't you apologize to Chris in your acceptance speech? Um, I was fogged out by that point. It's, 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 it's all fuzzy. I've reached out to Chris um, and the, mes the message that came back is that uh, he's not ready to talk. And when he is, he will reach out. Um, so I will, I will say to you, um, Chris, I apologize to you. Uh, my behavior was unacceptable and I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. All right, Chase, you wanna go first? Sure. So he kind of reads the message in a really clinical way. I think this is potentially uh, reducing the feeling of accusatory speech internally, uh, not necessarily shaping a narrative for us. And this is my opinion, as is this entire video, our opinions. Uh, but he's very stiff here. And I think this is potentially anger or resistance. Uh, we see his lip tightening during this initial response. We see his lips get really tight there, which is well, usually resistance. And during this discussion about waiting for Chris to reach out, we see this kind of hand gesture and then some more pacifying or adapting with the thumbs here. You'll see that throughout. And the, the, during the apologizing gesture, there's this knife hand that comes out. And we're seeing that at right at discussing the message that came in from Chris. And when he says my behavior, this is the farthest upward his lip goes for the entire video. And this might suggest some kind of disgust or disagreement. Uh, you can decide what he's disgusted with or disagreeing with. And the self-soothing behavior, you're going to see a whole lot of. The tension in the lips based on previous interviews, good thing we have a lot of videos of of him to go back and look at suggests that there's some withholding there, but I don't think this is an indicator of deception here. It's probably a disagreement with timing, format, publicity. He was likely asked to do this by a production management team or somebody who is heavily invested uh, probably financially or socially in his image. Uh, that's all I got there. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think this is a pretty odd place for him to be doing an apology like this. There's so much going on in the room. It's distracting. I don't, get that i don't know I, I i'm sure mark's got something to say about the psychology behind all that but it's there's so much going on in there the colors he's wearing are these drab um colors the whole room looks there's so much going on in there i don't know if it's to distract or to make it look like he's distracted or got a lot going on or whatever we see him using when he's, when he's sitting there before he starts uh asking the question that supposedly uh people have asked uh we see those adapter that adapter is hand squishing together like that a little bit his behavior is odd. His diction is so good. If you turn the sound off, you can, you'll can you know what he's saying because he uses his whole mouth. It's almost, it, it it's over the top. It's a little bit too much. So I'm under the impression he may be under some, uh, some kind of medication or something, maybe on something like that to help calm him down. Or maybe he's been on something like that since the, the whole thing happened. Um, but let's pay attention to that as we go through these. Let's pay attention to his diction, his eyebrow movement, and um, just his tone in general, because it's pre it's pretty solid all the way through, and we don't see much movement up in the, up in that brow, which is kind of odd as well. Um, he's so pronounced when he's reading the question that he looks angry at, at points. I'm not seeing true anger in there, but I'm seeing what looks like. I think it's just because the way he's he's shaping his mouth to say the words perfectly that it it looks he looks like he's angry. I think there are a lot of edits in this, as there probably should be, but they try to make it look, look like there aren't, because at one point his hands will be here, and then they'll be down to his sides when it cuts to the next uh, picture or the next shot of him. And when he says, uh, when he's talking about uh, Chris trying to reach out to him, he says, uh, when he is, he will reach out. It's when he does that little adapter there, a little scratch and the um and all that stuff. And uh, I don't think there's, I'm not seeing a lot of emotion. We may be seeing sadness or whatever. 
but it seems very somber and, and, and just almost a flat line of emotion at that point. And Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so I agree, uh, Scott. It's, it's heavily produced for an internet apology. It's not the usual kind of um, iPhone job that, that often people put out. It's got some classic tropes in there. It, he's in white. It's a very white room. So there is that, that sense of purity going on there. Uh, there's some nice images, one of which you, you sent me, Scott, which is the book on his table, an art book by El Anatsui. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Ghanese uh, artist who turns what we would usually ascribed to being junk, bits of plastic, bottle tops, into quite epic sculptures. So there's this idea of transform transforming the kind of the garbage into something quite new and quite beautiful. And there he is in this pristine stuff. He's Now, to your point, Chase, he's got his Westbrook cap on. Westbrook is, is the kind of holding company that he and his, his uh, ex-wife and there are other shareholders as well, and they own some quite important... Uh, collateral uh, properties. And so this is as much, um, I would say, an apology that's going out to us, the general public, as it is an apology that's going to hit the industry. So well-produced industry apology, as well as an internet apology going on. We've got up in the background there, um, the world is sick, love is the cure. Well, that's a really nice truism. I mean, is it sick? I mean, maybe, maybe not. Is love the cure? Possibly, possibly not. But it sounds pretty good. It looks pretty good. Great truism, great kind of motivational poster there up on the, on the wall, just in case we need something to latch onto, which isn't him and what he might have done wrong. And I think that's the point uh, of that, either consciously or unconsciously. But here's what happens in film production. Some of it is super conscious, and we hope it's usually super conscious. And some of it is, it, is kind of subconscious and unconscious, and just the work of, of artists doing what they feel is the right thing at the time. Uh, it's interesting, before this particular moment, if you watch the whole video, we have um, uh, a voiceover of just heavy sighs from Smith just breathing. So it's overly produced to give us this framework of heavy emotion before we even see him. This, this, this breathing of sorrow and depression, even before we see him. So it's being framed beautifully for us. Um, we see him adapting with his with his thumbs. And you're right, Scott, the, this changes from time to time. There's some some Big edits in there. Uh, look, the main thing for me in terms of what his his behaviour is saying is he says I was fogged out. It's all fuzzy to that um, to that question. So he avoids it. It's that kind of I don't quite remember why I did what I did. We're going to hear a different story a bit later on that doesn't quite match with that. So that's going to be interesting. I think what he's doing doing is avoiding the true feelings here. Uh, as to why he chose to say what he said. And I think we're going to see him avoid the true feelings because they won't play that well for the, for the audience. And we as the audience in the industry need to know that he has changed uh, his, his personality a little bit on this. Whether he has or not, that's a different thing. He deflects that ball of a question and he knocks it very clearly into Chris Rock's court and kind of goes, hey, it's, it's kind of up to him now to contact me. I've done my bit. Greg, what do you think? Yeah, agreed. You've covered most of it. Um, I think the big one is what you said last, Mark. He doesn't answer the question at all. He says, okay, I, I tried to apologize after. <clears throat> he doesn't say I didn't because, because why? There's not an answer. So he has to just come up with something. He starts off milling in his hands. That's an adapter. We say comforting moves. All adapters are comforting moves in some way because you're releasing nervous energy. But that answer where he does the weird lip thing is kind of in his baseline if you go look at him. It's kind of amusement in his upper face and then that lip thing. I have a really good friend named Darren that I think does exactly that when he's amused before he starts to go back with an answer to people. I see it all the time. If you're watching Darren, you know who you are. Um, that answer is in his baseline and that half smile thing is part of his persona. I think he's done it so many times, but he is uncomfortably touches his mouth. You're talking about that, Scott, when he starts to stroke the facial hair, that's an adapter to release nervous energy. And his eyes go down to the right. We associate with emotion when he says, "My at my behavior, and you see 
everybody's disgust will look different depending on bone structure, depending on the way your skin and your face is made. But you certainly see disgust, not just in his lips, Chase, I agree with you there, but also in his nose, up around the edges of his nose, you can see a rise in his face. I think he's disgusted with that. He's adapting constantly as he speaks. And one thing that I would point out, Scott, is culture matters. South Jersey, Philly, that over enunciating the way you speak is cultural very much part of that culture. I have friends who mind you, and they're not aggressive, they're just talking to you, but that's the way they talk. I said to them before, if you talk to people where I live that way, you might be in the parking lot rolling around a little bit. So it just depends on culture in some cases, and I think that's part of his upbringing, part of who he is, maybe that's why he shows his teeth more. Um, the last couple of things I would say is what I see here is regret and apprehension. What's it about? Don't know. Don't know if it's regret about slapping Chris Rock? Is it regret about a relationship with somebody that has gone south as a result of it about his career? Don't know. But I do see regret. I do see apprehension. That's all I got. Why didn't you apologize to Chris in your acceptance speech? Um, I was fogged out by that point. It's, 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 it's all fuzzy. I've reached out to Chris, um, and the, mes the message that came back is that uh, he's not ready to talk, and when he is, he will reach out. Um, so I will, I will say to you, um, Chris, I apologize to you. Uh, my behavior was unacceptable and I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. I, I want to apologize to Chris's mother. I saw an interview that Chris's mother did, and you know that was one of the things about that moment. I just didn't realize, and you know I wasn't thinking, but how many people got hurt in that moment. So I want to uh, apologize to Chris's mother. I want to apologize to. Uh, Chris's family, uh, specifically Tony Rock. You know, we had a great relationship. You know, Tony Rock was my man, um, and uh, this, this is this is probably irreparable. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I like these uh, asymmetrical gestures that he does, wheeling around in his head there, kind of explaining the thoughts of chaos and confusion that were going on. And then we get uh, an eye block and the hands blocking as well um, to show um, to show his blindness there, that he, he can't kind of now see or couldn't see at the time what was really going on. Um, I wasn't thinking he says, and kind of double blocks there. Um, very congruent, I would say, actually. I mean, this this feels like it's actually quite, and looks like it, it's quite truthful. Again, in the in the environment around him, interesting to see that mic there. I mean, I'd be interested, Scott, whether you think that's the mic that's actually picking him up. No, I don't think he is. I think he's got a really good quality uh, mic down yeah. here or a boom mic I'll look up for there. It. Yeah. So, so, you know, my question becomes, Scott, is like, why the kind of almost SM58 in there? It's not an SM58, but it's close to it. Well, it's the icon of stand-up. It's the icon of rapping. It's the icon of pop. It's having that icon next to him um, or that, that would affiliate him with the person who he's kind of done wrong to and affiliate him with the industry. It's, it's, it's not necessary for it to be there. It's not doing the sound uh, on that one. Uh, Tony Rock was my man and we get this um, hand clap on there, giving the finality of that. Again, very, very congruent there. So I believe it's true what he's what he's saying here. Uh, but Chase, what, what do you think? What do you got on this one? Yeah, there's. I agree with you. There's some emotional accessing where his eyes go down into his right, our left, and it's it's more powerful here in an apology to the mother than in the, the apology to Chris. And that's something that's pretty noteworthy. And he mentions this video of, of her interview and shifts to emotional uh, accessing and stays there inside of that emotional eye movement to where we're accessing emotional memories. That's what that means. Uh, and he stays there for more than any other topic that he covers, which I think is, is a very key data point here. And when somebody apologizes, 
here's three filters to look at that apology through. So number one is, do they mention their own behavior or is it vague? Do they actually talk about what they did or are they vaguing it out by just saying the words behavior or actions? Number two, do they communicate with some kind of sincerity? Does it look like a sincere apology? And number three, do they discuss how it impacted the person they're apologizing to? That's a big deal. And these don't necessarily mean deception because there's a difference between truth and a genuine apology. Uh, they can definitely reveal a lot about an apology, though. So here we're seeing this vague mentions of behavior, no mention of how it affected the other person. And it appears to be sincere so far, like Mark, you were, you were just saying. And at least we aren't seeing deception indicators here. But keep in mind, there's a difference between uh, honesty, truth, facts, sincerity, stress, and then just lying. So there's a big difference here. So was it real? Was it fake? It depends on what definition you're using. Greg? Yeah, my, my gut says this is the reason for the apology, not Chris Rock, not Chris Rock at all. Yes, there's a part of it that's for us. There's also a part of it that is, if you listen to his words, he says, I wasn't thinking, but how many people got hurt? Not how many people I hurt when I did this. That's a crafty delivery of an apology. He's not apologizing to Chris Rock. He's apologizing for causing hurt to other people. He also will listen as we progress. He's going to talk more about us, us out here, not those people, us. So part of this is business, and we all know it. They're in a business where they have to be liked because you, we're going to spend our money on them. But if you watch him, I agree with you. He goes immediately when he says, mother, there's an emphatic head nod as he says that. And he shows um, some concern in his brow as he says, mother, and then those center tips of his brows go up. We associate that with sorrow. He withdraws his lips and his mouth goes down. And you'll see him drop his head down to the right as well, like you talked about, and purse his lips after that. And that's in disappointment. I think we're seeing all of that. So I think that part's legitimate. When he talks about Tony Rock, you see his face light up up in this part not much in the lower face. So we associate that typically with amusement so or with happiness of the, about the person in the relationship. And then he says it may be gone. He drops that hand when he says, my man, you said it earlier, Mark, that drop, that drop emphatic. I think all of this makes us think, yes, he came to the realization that he needed to apologize from a larger perspective to us and to bring up the mother and the brother and all that. This is not at all. This is not at all about Chris Rock, not at all. And we'll hear more later about why and what he feels. But I believe the apology can be sincere and him still not be apologizing to Chris Rock. That's my point, Scott. All right, we're, we're seeing, like Mark was talking about, larger <clears throat> use of illustrators here. And this is uh, so far the biggest we've seen. And that makes sense. He's trying to get a big point across. He's leading up to the part about his mom or about Chris's mom. That's why he does his hands like this to show. I think that's to show a group, you know, show what a, a circle or a big group people is he's worried about um, fixing this for. Um, the mixing of the illustrators, I think that's supposed to, to give us the indication he's all mixed up and still mixed up, goes along with the room, which is all those different things. Like you were saying earlier, Mark, that microphone has nothing to do with what's going on there. I don't I don't know why that's there. I kept thinking about that, too. When he turns toward it, you don't hear a change at all. And I think you're right. He's either mic'd or you know he's got a, uh, something stuck in here. He's got, a, got one over him. Uh, his illustrators are correctly timed. We quite often will associate... Um, illustrators that don't land when they're supposed to land on the words with someone being insincere or deceptive and here i think they're on time and they look the way they should and um so far this is the most this is the most emotion we, we've seen but keep in mind and, and start paying attention to his eyes where they're looking because a lot of the times what he's doing i know he's got some notes down there he's checking because you can see his eyes go you can see him reading uh, going back and forth a little bit there. So he's checking his notes. He knows what these questions are. But I still think it's odd the way he's reading the questions so clearly and so perfectly. That's, a, again, why I think he may be on some kind of medication. Nothing wrong with that. He probably needs it at this point. But that's just the behavior I'm seeing. All right, we good? Yeah, all good. All right. Chase, man, your leaning is just <laughs> lacking right now. <laughs> I, was, I want to apologize to Chris's mother. I saw an interview that Chris's mother did. And, you know, that was one of the things about that moment. I just didn't realize 
And, you know, I wasn't thinking, but how many people got hurt in that moment. So I want to uh, apologize to Chris's mother. I want to apologize to uh, Chris's family, uh, specifically Tony Rock. You know, we had a great relationship. You know, Tony Rock was my man. Um, and uh, this, this, is, this is probably irreparable. I spent the last three months um, replaying and understanding the nuances and, and the complexities of what happened in, in that moment. Um, and I'm not gonna try to unpack all of that right now, but I can say to all of you, there is no part of me that thinks that was the right way to behave in that moment. There's no part of me that thinks that's the optimal way to handle a feeling of disrespect or, or insults. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this one's pretty quick for me. Um, there's a real tongue jet at three months. That's a tongue jet of the classic kind. You can see his lips part just a little and his tongue push through. That's distaste. Uh, so he's probably thinking, you know, why did I wait so long? That kind of thing. And so he's showing us that he has distaste in that case. This isn't me. It's bigger than me getting angry. I, he's going down a path of trying to say, it's not me. This is a much bigger thing. This is all about things that happen and people who behave in a bad way. And look, when he goes to no part of me thinks that this was the right way. Look at that brow. Look at that brow. This is, I tell you all the time, little Johnny comes in and says, and the cat broke the cookie jar. That's that move. He's waiting for approval. The interesting piece is he only cast his eyes downright one time, and that's when that tongue jut comes out. And then he, Scott, does what we call in True Crime Workshop, the romancer. He makes hard eye contact the rest of the time as if he's talking to an individual. That's the most emphatic thing he's done yet with that brow up. We've seen him moving it a good bit, but that's the most powerful use of the brow we've seen. And then when he say this isn't about this isn't about that. I say to all of you, this isn't about boom. That's damage control. Now I believe because his lips withdraw immediately after. Now I believed because he says it's disrespect or insult and a feeling of. I think now he's protecting something. Mark, whether it's a family relationship where he said you better go apologize or whether it's a manager who said you better go apologize and you're not going to work anymore or whether it's something else altogether, something in his ego can't tell that, can't read his mind. But I don't think it's about Chris Rock at all. I think it's about us collectively and what we think of him not necessarily his mother or any of that uh scott what do you got all right he's coming on like there are all these complexities and nuances to what he did he just lost his temper and went there and slapped him that's it there's no, there are no he's this is the the part that really gets on my nerves because he's acting like there's so much going on he didn't understand and doesn't know why he did and all that i know why he did it you know why he did it and and that's where we're sitting. He's trying to make it look like there's all this going on, I guess, to fill up this, to get this thing he's making to get an apology for, to apology for, to get our forgiveness for him to do this. It's ridiculous. His cadence speeds up and slows down in here, and his diction becomes even sharper as, his, as he over illustrates everything he's talking about. So it seems to me so far this is the, this is the least um, sincere moment we've seen up to this point. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. There's there's also a logic drop in there as well, Scott, because if he spent the last three months, you know, looking at the nuance and unpacking it and, and really looking at that complexity of it, why is it still fogged and fuzzy? You can't have both. You can't have both things. Well, I think it's fogged and fuzzy because he doesn't want to tell us exactly what you said there, which is he got angry, he went up and he thwacked the guy. You know, and then afterwards went, oh, shouldn't have done that, should I? Yeah, it's probably not that complex. Yeah, there may be some all kinds of stuff that he can talk through with his therapist or friends or family. I, I totally understand that. But when it comes down to it, the basic emotion there is most likely anger, most likely just plain old anger being turned into aggression there, I would imagine. Anyway, he needs us to know that 
you know, he's now moved forward. And so we get this really strong gesture of jumping over these hurdles or moving the walls forward. So he's a bigger person. He's taking up more space there. He really has moved on. And again, Greg, I agree. That's that's not really necessary for, for us, you know, normal people at home. That's for the industry to say, hey, you know, treat treat my commodities well, treat treat my industry well. He's got some important holdings and, you know, I'm ready to get back to work and I'm ready for you to be good investors in my company. Uh, what is interesting for me, though, is that he does admit the feeling of being, the feeling of being disrespected and of being insulted. Not a feeling of being insulted. He was insulted. So somebody insulted him. He felt disrespected. He got up. He hit the guy. It's probably about that simple. Chase, Chase, you got it. You got it any more complex than that? What do you got? Now, you guys got all the cool behavior stuff. So let's just break down the, the linguistics side of this. He says you need to understand nuance and complexities. So that's his behavior. So the reasons for his behavior are nuanced and complex, not the other person, only for him. The other person didn't say those things on stage because it was nuanced and complex. That was just simple to understand. The aggressor is nuanced and complex. And he says, there's no part of me that thinks this was the right way to behave. This is distancing language. And when he says it was not the optimal way, we see this little thing here. Mark talks about this all the time. And this suggests that it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't the worst. He's just saying it's not the best. That's that's what that means. And the only mention of true negative behavior in, in this entire clip belongs to Chris Rock. It's disrespectful and insult. No distancing language whatsoever. It's directly negative pointing at Chris Rock's behavior. Lots of shifts down to internal dialogue this way. This is where his eyes move down into his left. And the words he uses for his own behavior, let's just recap, are behavior thing and not optimal those are the three as opposed to chris rock's behavior being disrespectful and insulting so interesting way to to phrase this from a linguistics point of view i spent the last three months um replaying and understanding the nuances and and the complexities of what happened in in that moment um, and I'm not going to try to unpack all of that right now, but I can say to all of you, there is no part of me that thinks that was the right way to behave in that moment. There's no part of me that thinks that's the optimal way to handle a feeling of disrespect or, or insults. After Jada rolled her eyes, did she tell you to do something? No. Um, it's like, you know, I'm, I made a choice on my own, from my own experiences, from my history with Chris, Jada had nothing to do with it. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. Um, and say sorry to my, my kids and, and my family for the heat that I brought on all of us. Um, to all my fellow nominees, you know, this is a community. It's like I won because you, you voted for me. And it, it, it really breaks my heart to have stolen and, and tarnished, tarnished your moment. Um, I can still see Quest Love's eyes. You know, it, it happened on Quest Love's uh, award, and you know, it's like I'm 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 sorry. Really, isn't sufficient. All right, I'll go first on this one. His voice tone completely changes here, obviously, and he's this is different from any other type of apology I've, I've ever seen where somebody goes from this really sad thing to this thing where he's trying to, to look all cutesy and sound like the Will Smith that is in movies and, and stuff like that. It's, it's just really odd sound and to see him do that. 
but he adapts with his adapts with his hands through the whole reading of the question. He starts there, like he did at the beginning, and then this whole trying to to show how he was being a bad boy and it's okay because he's being. It's almost like he's saying I'm being naughty or something like that. Just so cornball at that point he's doing it. And like Mark was saying earlier here, he contradicts himself from saying how fuzzy things were. He talks about how he remembers seeing Questlove's eyes during that and how that made him feel bad. So he's remembering all these little details when he says it's all fuzzy and he doesn't remember anything. He's got all that stuff in his room. So it makes it look like there look like there's a lot going on. He's confused and everything. And then um, again, he's trying to... Um, I, I don't know. It just it just it's a, it's just a gross feeling to see him doing this. It didn't. It, it's just such a off putting thing he's trying to pull off here. It makes me it makes me uneasy looking at him. I'm sure he's he's trying to be as honest as he possibly can because he's got to apologize. But it just seems so fake. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with you. What we're seeing here is contempt in one part of this. I think he's slightly offended by this question, and I think laughing it off like this might be a sign at this point. Uh, Jada being in charge of him uh, is that he's very sensitive about. And I know nothing about his life. Just the behavior we're seeing in this clip suggests that he's very sensitive about this point and needs to reassert how small of a deal it is and make it a smaller deal to reassert some kind of masculinity. Uh, when he says sorry to my kids and family, there's a mismatched illustrator. And Scott was just talking about this. It's my kids and my family. And then his hand, his hand goes down. You can see it perfectly. And say sorry to my my kids and and my family for the heat that I brought on. And the heat that I brought on is what he's saying. But he's saying this about his family and people around him. But he's saying the heat that I brought on. He's pointing to himself. Uh, this could mean that he and his family are the, kind of the same. It could mean that he's thinking about just the heat that he brought on himself. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Greg? Yeah, a couple of things. Listen when he is talking about the nominees to his cadence. To all my fellow nominees, you know, this is a community. It's like I won because you you voted for me, and it, it, it really breaks my heart. Then listen when he's talking about his family and whether or not Jada told him to do something. Jada had nothing to do with it. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. Um, and say sorry to my my kids and and my family well when he's talking about the nominees that's kind of just wrote but when he's talking about her everything slows down and he navigates the words very carefully for me that's the red flag because he doesn't do that very often and he uses a mix of words on my own from my own experience with chris there's a cadence shift in the navigation ding 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 something's up right there what we know is that there is baggage with him and Jada Pinkett Smith and Chris Rock from past jokes. So that's part of the whole equation. As far as did she tell him to do something? She didn't have to because remember, relationships are microcultures. And I guarantee you, every person who's married, if your wife or husband goes, that's a fight starter right there. And if they do that and then make eye contact with you, it's like, are you going to sit there? So did she make him do something? No. Nobody can make you do anything with that signaling. But in a relationship, a lot of dynamic is going on. We can't see behind the curtain. Insiders to Hollywood will tell you all kinds of things, maybe. People who know all these people, but we don't. What we're doing is working from here. He does that lower teeth exposed thing in a big way this time, Scott. And maybe it is anger, micro expression of anger. Maybe it's something not even micro, an expression of anger. Maybe it's just culture. But when he talks about that at the end of the my history with Chris, you see distaste or disapproval right there as he's talking about Jada had nothing to do with it. And then that uncharacteristic pause. For me, I would climb all over that because something's going on right in there. It doesn't make it feel like it's an apology. It's more of a trying to push off. Nobody made me do it. I did something wrong, but not actually even saying I did something wrong. Not coming out and saying, look, I was a, if, if I were if I walked up and slapped somebody on stage, I would probably come back and say, hey, I was a dumbass. It's, you know, I did something stupid. We're not hearing that. Does he feel some kind of remorse? Yeah. Does he feel remorse for slapping Chris Rock? Not sure that's true. That's what I got. Mark, what do you got? 
Yeah, uh, so I agree. Th this laugh that he that he does is very different from what we've seen elsewhere, and it just reminds me of stuff he'd do in The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It is that kind of boyish absurdity around stuff. Now, it's not that that's not probably some part of him. He's a great performer, so he's always bringing out parts of him, but it's still relatively performative. It's still relatively, you kind of think, I think you're acting your way through this. You're performing your way through through this bit at this point. So, uh, you know, just as you were saying there, Scott, it, it really does stand out that bit as very, very different and causes some alarm bells. I'm sorry, babe, he says, and we see contempt at that point. Now, uh, is it contempt for her? Well, if, if it is contempt for her, then any relationship would be doomed. We know that from some some extraordinary um, uh, uh tests that were done where uh, in, in therapeutic sessions, if you saw one partner show contempt for the other, they ended up parting from each other. It was, it was you know, a really good call. Um, well, what we see is that his eyes go down as well. I would say in shame. So I think it's more likely not contempt for her. It's more likely some kind of contempt and shame for himself. And we'll we'll hear about that a little bit later as well. Bitterness in the mouth, absolutely, when he talks about quest love. So some real kind of bitterness and pain that it happened around that particular great icon of, of music and, and culture as well. But interesting, I think we're starting to see the the contempt turned inwards, uh, and that's a, a, a very strong shame that we might be starting to see here. Now, what's it really shame about? Yeah, as, as, as people have been saying, maybe it's not that much shame around Chris Rock, but shame around breaking the cultural norm for that particular industry and that particular environment. After Jada rolled her eyes, did she tell you to do something? No. Um, it's like, you know, I'm, I made a choice on my own, from my own experiences, from my history with Chris. Jada had nothing to do with it. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. Um, I'm gonna say sorry to my, my kids and, and my family for the heat that I brought on all of us. Um, to all my fellow nominees, you know, this is a community. It's like I won because you you voted for me. And it, it, it really breaks my heart to have stolen and and tarnished, tarnished your moment. Um, I can still see Quest Love's eyes. You know, it, it happened on Quest Love's uh, award and you know it's like I'm 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 sorry really isn't sufficient what would you say to the people who looked up to you before the slap or people who expressed that you let them down um so there's two things one um Disappointing people is my central trauma. Um, I hate when I let people down. Um, so it it hurts. Uh, it hurts me psychologically and emotionally to know I didn't live up to uh, people's image and impression of me. And The work I'm trying to do is I am deeply remorseful and I'm trying to be remorseful without being ashamed of myself, right? I'm human and I made a mistake and I'm trying not to think of myself as a piece of shit. Um, so I would say to those people, I know it was confusing. I know it was shocking. Um, but I, I promise you, I am uh, deeply devoted and committed to putting light and love and joy into the world. And 
you know, if you if you hang on, I promise we'll be able to be friends again. All right, Chase, what do you got? I think this is the most honest clip so far. And he says that's important uh, to feel remorse or, or he's communicating the message. It's important to feel remorse without changing or modifying your identity about a mistake. I think that's an important piece of advice for everybody. You can feel remorse without calling yourself names. The closed eyes here are different than what you see when someone's being smug or self-centered. And here's the, here's the difference. There's a downward head gaze. There's a lack of an eyebrow raise when you see people close their eyes and raise their eyebrows at the same time while they're talking. A whole different deal. And when you see Do someone it. who's smug, you'll see a head tilt and a head back while they're, while they're explaining some of that stuff. Like if you ask someone why they just bought an electric car, they might say, well, you know, it's good for the environment. <laughs> and you'll see the head tilt, head back maneuver. But he's still reluctant to discuss his specific behavior. And throughout this clip, he's using pacifying adaptive behaviors. And there's some discomfort here and a need to feel some sort of control. And we've talked about this before. Uh, in the previous episode, when we analyzed Will Smith, this was all about a feeling of a loss of control in your life typically sprouts up during key moments. And we'll talk about that maybe in a second. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so there's a big piece of spin here for me, which he spins it into letting people down being his central trauma. Well, the question was about what do you want to say to people who feel let down, not, you know, that that's your central trauma. It, it was a very swift maneuver into now this being about him. So I, I think that's that's uh, purposeful so that it distracts from others' pain around this and we can get into his trauma, his pain, and, and feel for him because he wants to move us along in this drama. Because ultimately, he wants to move us along. He wants to move us into the next part of his career. He's looking for a comeback. And why not? Because, you know, people do deserve a comeback. If they do the right things, they deserve a comeback. And people love a comeback. You know, of course they do. It's it's great drama. So there's nothing wrong with this, but it's just like we know what you're doing. It's a it's a beautiful little spin maneuver there. Um eye blocks there in, in shame and and staccato rhythm. And so I think we are getting some truthful pain around the the shame. Now the interesting thing here is this idea of kind of contempt being pushed upon himself and him being ashamed of himself. And he's saying, that's what I want to avoid. I want to avoid that shame about myself. That's, that's all good. I totally agree, Chase, that that would be, that could be devastating and could be, you know, uh, hugely depressing, you know, traumatically depressing if you do that. However, you do still have to show shame. In order to make a comeback, you still have to do an, an overt, very clear display of shame for the group, because if you don't, the group can't trust you. And so different cultures, different societies have different rituals that happen and customs that happen and ways that you do it. Families have ways that you do it. You know, groups have ways that they do it. So, you know, in my mind, he really needs to get past this idea of it being his central trauma. Could be true or false, and I'm sure it's very, very true. So, okay, good. But he has to get past that and be able to show the industry, the people involved, the people he wronged, that sense of shame, or he won't, I think, get the comeback that he's looking for because it cannot be trusted. Uh, that's all I got on that one. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, this is two different stories entirely to me. The first is probably true where he's going through and he's telling you about his feelings and how he feels in this case. And often we use our eyes as barriers. We're closing our eyes to give us space as we're talking about something painful. We see it all the time in real life in people. So they'll tell you, and it was one of the worst experiences in my life that you expect. So he's giving you something that's internal. Then it changes. After he does that, he does all that adapting. And he goes into, and I'm going to jump ahead because we cover most of these things, but he goes into something in the interrogation room, red flags me immediately. And that's, he starts to talk about how he's feeling and his eyes drop down into his left 
and he is talking slowly and navigating. If I'm sitting here and I'm going to tell you all about how much I care about you, Scott, you know, you mean so much to me. And does that look right to, to anybody here? When you're talking about no. feelings, <laughs> when you're trying to get information out about feelings, when you're talking about something from your core, you, you're, if you're going to look down, you're going to look down to your right. Usually you'll make eye contact with somebody you're trying to give that information. So it's a BS indicator for me. And I feel like this is a packaged message. This last part is about a packaged message. Look, I'm a human being. Actually, honestly, I, a better apology you couldn't ask for. I'm a human being. I really screwed up. I did something stupid. That's what he should have said in the very beginning. What he's getting to is finally saying those words at the end of this entire thing. But he's doing it in a way that hedges. And, you know, Will Smith, if you're watching this, if you ever have to apologize again, just get to it quickly, because then all the rest is window dressing. People love you. They watch your movies. You could have come in and said, I made a mistake. I'm human. Boom. I, I w wish I hadn't waited three months. That's what this whole message says. Scott, what do you got? Once again, he's trying to make it look like he's reading this for the first time or hearing this question for the first time. So that makes me a little bit uneasy. And then what he's taught, what he's saying, this is just all therapy talk. This is this is exactly, I'm sure, whatever the therapist said to him. He's just spitting that back out because that's what he absorbed when they said, look, man, you know, this is normal. You're human. You're this. You're that. And that's the way humans do. And I'm sure he's just repeating that back out almost as a, as trying to um, reassure himself of of that's what's going on at this point i think he closes his eyes and he slows down because that's the part he wants to make sure he gets a, he gets across that's the most important part to him uh, about how he has to correct his behavior and he's got to sell it at that point so i'm pretty sure that's what that is and i think this i hate to say this part but i i, I don't i mean i'm sure he feels bad at some part of it but i don't think he feels as bad as he's coming on that he feels as bad about at this point that's me all right, we good? Yeah. All right. What would you say to the people who looked up to you before the slap or people who expressed that you let them down? Um, so there's two things. One, um, disappointing people is my central trauma. Um, I hate when I let people down. Um, so it, it hurts, uh, it hurts me psychologically and emotionally to know I didn't live up to, uh, people's image and impression of me. And the work I'm trying to do is I am deeply remorseful. And I'm trying to be remorseful without being ashamed of myself, right? I'm human and I made a mistake and I'm trying not to think of myself as a piece of shit. Um, so I would say to those people, I know it was confusing. I know it was shocking. Um, but I, I promise you, I am uh, deeply devoted and committed to putting light and love and joy into the world. And, you know, if you, if you hang on, I promise we'll be able to be friends again. All right, we'll still around the room and see what everybody's got to say as an overview. We'll take 30 seconds or less. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I think this is less a message for us people, film watchers at home. I think it's a message for the industry uh, in general, I would say. I, I think it's said best by that poster up the back of him. The world is is ill and love is the cure. Um, yeah, Will Smith is really nothing to do with any of the wrongs that have gone on. It's all about the world. Just showing, you know, love and light out there is going to solve everything. And we don't need to look at Will Smith anymore, anymore and kind of go, I think you just lost it, got angry. You couldn't control yourself. You did a bad thing. Um, he's trying to maneuver past that, I think. It's a bit of a shame uh, because it could be a simple, easy uh, apology at this point. Chase, what do you think? Yep. I think we're still seeing Will exhibiting some of these traits of somebody who's genuinely bringing 
for most of his life, love and positive energy wherever he goes. And this often comes, these people like this often comes with the side of repressing a lot of negative emotions. You see this in people like Robin Williams, especially. And an exponential buildup of resentment tends to happen here. And when the resentment is also about control, one single event that shines a really bright light on a person's lack of control will cause all of that to escape sometimes very quickly and rapidly in one scenario. And I think that's what we saw a few months ago. And I think that's uh, what we're seeing the apology for. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, we don't know what's going on inside their relationship. We know that you know they've done all kinds of things and this red table interview and all that, and that probably creates a certain amount of stress. There's also this part that Chris Rock has made jokes about her in the past. I think, um, I forget the exact joke, but you can look it up. So there's baggage there, and I'm sure there's been behind the scenes something going on in relationships, microcultures and microcultures, and we don't know what goes on there. But almost guaranteed, if today your wife goes, and then makes hard eye contact with you, you certainly will feel some urge to do something to correct the situation. This is not a good choice, especially considering where he was. But at the end of the day, this apology could have been very succinct, very simple. Hey, I made a mistake and I did something stupid and, but nothing simple. It's Hollywood. Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I think we've got too many details that mean absolutely nothing in this. And I think it had to be, he can't just come on and say, hey, I'm sorry, and move along. He's got to add all this stuff to it. So I think we saw a lot of things being added to it. What he should have, in my opinion, what he should have said, came out and said, look, I got mad because he dissed my wife and I slapped him. Shouldn't have done it. Sorry I did it. Chris, I'm sorry, man. I called him, wouldn't talk to me. Hell, I wouldn't talk to me either for doing something like that. Embarrassed the squat out of him in front of the world uh, during the Oscars. That's horrible. Shouldn't have done it, man. That was, a, that was a bad mistake. That's crazy what happened. I shouldn't have done it. And it, boy, am I ever sorry. And that's it. That's what I think you should have said. And that's where I, th that's where I think I land on that. Is it too much in there? And he just should have said, hey, look, man, I'm sorry. And just what I said and then moved on. All right. Are you good? Yeah. He can probably right. deep fake that apology that you just did there and put that out <laughs> next. Be perfect. I bet you somebody, really will, somebody will, will do next. something deep with it. Deep faking it as we speak <laughs> oh, right now. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> All right, fellas. I think this is good, and we'll see you next time. See you. So what do you got?